Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Equalizer. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I do love a good, like, oh, like, kind of a spy thing of, well, we don't know who the traitor is. We don't know who the mole is. But obviously, it involves uh, Robin getting called into a CIA operation, which the question is, like, wait, why was she brought on? Fold. And obviously Robin suggests it's like, well, it's probably because I, I owe the CIA a lot of favors. So they're probably cashing in some of those ships now with this situation. But getting someone on. And now I guess in retrospect, it makes sense because they needed someone on the outside. But even with the context of the later parts of the episode, we find out Robin, not even just an outsider. Robin was specifically brought on board for some uh, um, some situ uh, for this particular situation. But basically they're transporting a guy named Ezra, who's played by Donald Logue. I was like, hey, when I saw him, I was like, that's so cool. Um, I, I obviously the thing I best know him for is like uh, Harvey uh, Bullock from Gotham. Uh, there's a shit comedy I was a b part of like almost like well, like two decades ago or something like maybe a little less. I, I feel like that maybe it was mid two thousands, maybe it wasn't early two thousands, but it's called like Grounded for Life. Uh, I want to say Stumptown, the short lived show, which still bums me out that that show only got one season. I actually got a second season, but then. Because of the pandemic, it kind of screwed that show over. Um, I want to say that's the most recent thing, but I feel like there's something even more recent. I saw him and I just can't place it. Either way, uh, the fact of the matter is he's kind of like a guy that's got connections to a cartel that he's willing to talk to the, this very like mythical top brass CIA person named, uh, was it Colton uh, Fisk? And... He will only talk to this guy to get this information. And so it's like, all right, we got to transport him. But he's going on and on and on about there being some mole and no one's believing him. And I'm like, oh, God, who's the mole going to be? The entire time I was like, please don't actually let it be uh, Brett Dalton's character. Griffin was like, please don't, please don't, please don't. And obviously jumping ahead a little bit, it turns out it is. Which I was super bummed about because I thought they were setting this up to be a situation of like, right, he was going to be like the bishop replacement, like the person like with CIA connections that Robin could turn to. I thought that was going to be the case. I guess they're going to be kind of passing that puck down the line a little bit. Uh, but I just thought, I, I was like, please don't let it be him. Because at first I was like, there's no way it's actually going to be Ezra because it's too on the nose. It's just a little too obvious. I was like, so it had to be like, because at first I was like, well, could it be Shaw? Because I think, because Robin had given Shaw this look when they were locked and loaded. And it's like, oh, what are you looking at? What is it? She's like, nothing. Let's, let's kind of like defend this position. But it's like time and time again. But I was like, because what confused me too, I was like, well, no one's been alone long enough to actually make a call or anything. Because even later on, I'm like, Griffin and Ezra were together. And I was, my mind, I was like, Yo, did Robin actually check Shaw for a pulse? I was like, could she actually be faking her death or something like that? Because you've had those twists where it's like, oh my god, uh, this person's dead. It's like, I'll actually, no, I faked my death. I've actually been a mastermind behind this game the entire time. I've seen that happen from time to time in, in movies. So I was wondering if something would kind of happen in this regard in that, in that aspect. And it's like, no, it's, it wasn't the case. Um, I was about to give an example of a movie that came to mind that did it, but it's like, it's an older movie, so I could spoil it, but it's one of those, like, oh, like, it's one of those twisty movies where it's like, oh, who's the bad guy? And I, I wouldn't want to spoil this movie in case anyone ever goes and watches it. It's a really good, like, kind of uh, thriller in that same regard. It was a, the movie I'm thinking, I don't even want to say the movie now, because I already kind of spoiled the twist to it. Regardless. Um, either way. Uh, I was kind of wondering if it was going to be something like that, but then it came down to, uh, she's like, right, show me your arms. I was like, w are they going to have like a tattoo or something? But it's like a, it's a tracker underneath the skin. And like, the fact is Griffin was reluctant to show us. So if he showed the first one, I was like, all right, we're going, I was like, please don't, please don't. And it showed the second one. I was like, no, Griffin. Cause like I said, I would like the, I, I immediately thought that the moment like, uh, uh, Shaw got introduced last season. I was like, oh my God, they're setting him up to be the new bishop. And I was like, yeah, like we even had him uh, earlier this season. I was like, okay, that's good. And now it's like a nope. I mean, that, and they, they turned out around quickly because he was in the first episode of the season. Um, and now it's a situation of, uh, now it's like a no, it's like episode five. He's already been kind of removed from the board. He's not dead. They did bring him in, but... I mean, well, Robin made sure to shoot him in non-vital places, you know, just to put him down. But I think, like, he's, he could always pop up later on, which would be interesting because, you know, if you know anything about his character from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Uh, 
Ward uh, kind of was locked up for all the season two after he was found out to be Hydra. So, like, it, it'd be an interesting parallel to kind of see him in that circumstance kind of again. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll see him again giving all, like, information. It's actually sad because he's like, right, I wouldn't sell them out for money, but basically after something went wrong, he was, uh, he got hurt during, he got shot during a mission and eventually got addicted to opioids and he ended up shooting and killing a dealer that he was getting drugs from. Dealer turned out to be an undercover cop. This cartel found out and they basically been holding over his head and it's like, once they got the grips in you, they're never going to let you go. So the more and more stuff he did for them, the more dirt and ammunition he had to keep him under their thumb. So... And he wasn't going to go to jail because it's like, well, first and foremost, jail's not a good place for a cop, especially if they find out you're a cop. But also, it's just like a right. No, like no cop in general, I think, would want to be there. Even beside that, it's just like, right, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in jail. Like, you're going to have to put me down or I will put you down, Robin. So it is kind of sad. But what makes it even sadder, too, is he's behind everything. Like, from, our, from the moment we met him, he was a bad guy. I was like, no! I was like, like I said, I thought they were setting him up to be the next bishop. In fact, he's the reason Bishop got killed. You're like, man, it's like, oh, the guy that was going to give us information in the first episode. Um, well, not in the first episode. I think it was, wasn't that last season. Or was that? I don't remember now. Uh, but it's like, yeah, like, the guy that was going to give us information, all of a sudden he dropped dead. Yeah, that was definitely last season. That was probably the season finale, wasn't it? It's like, yeah, that guy, he dropped dead. Well, that was because of you, too. Like, every step of the way, oh, uh, Quinn getting my gun, that getting your gun and trying to shoot me, that was you, too. I'm like, man, he did everything wrong. I was like, no. So there ain't no, like, oh, man. Like I said, I enjoyed the twist. I was just hoping the entire time, please don't let it be him. Please don't be, let it be him. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I did like the whole Ezra and Robin back and forth because he knows Bishop and he's like, oh, so Bishop's gone. And it's like, okay. Um, even referencing the fact is that because he says a specific uh, phrase in Arabic that like Robin immediately recognized from uh, Bishop and that's where they kind of connected. And um, he the entire time calling her like a mall cop. And he's like, wow, like... Um, because like when she showed off her arsenal hidden in that place, it's like I am I'm warming up to you more and more, and uh, yeah. But I love the the the, the real reveal where it's like actually actually he's actually Fisk, who that uh, the type top class like as um, CIA agent. Apparently, like he's he's kind of like a myth and a legend, and obviously, so this whole thing was a test. He basically put together an entire team of bad people. He didn't know who was responsible. Like he put. He knew that uh, Griffin and Robin worked together, so he didn't know if he could even trust Robin. So he put her on this team to bring out the moles. And it's like, but you got two good agents killed in the process. He's like, no, they were shitty people too. They might not have been working with the uh, cartel the way uh, Griffin was, but they had sold out their country too. So for him, it's like, no, no, like I made sure to make sure that this squad was made up of people we couldn't trust. So if you all died, lo and behold, that would have been it. But I'm like, holy crap. Because that was also the thing, too, of like, right, the CIA knew exactly where to find Robin. It's like, this is my place. This isn't something that CIA should know about. So how did you guys know to roll up here at the last second, like, to help and everything? It's like, there's something off about this. And it's like, yeah, it was, it was quote, unquote, Ezra, you know, Fisk the entire time. I was like, that's so interesting. Once again, twist upon twist. Like, I mean, it's like, oh, man, that's pretty dope that you end up being Fisk, but also finding out this whole thing was for the purpose of, a smoking out a mole, but also it's a team comprised of people he didn't trust, three of which were bad people. He wasn't sure about Robin. He wasn't sure about her fully until the very end. Her sparing Griffin, because it was like, right, if she was a part of the, like, if she was in, in under the, um, under the same umbrella as Griffin, that like this cartel has something on her, she would have put him down to protect her own cover, but sparing him wouldn't have, you know, done that. So that, to, that in moment solidified it for Fisk that she wasn't bad. But now he's like, yeah, uh, now like your deal with Bishop is actually under my purview now. So now you're going to work for me. And she's like, I'm not going to work for anyone, especially someone like you who doesn't care enough to kind of get like to create such a dangerous situation. Because like uh, basically being like Bishop would have never done nothing like this. The reason why he's going so hard on the painting after Robin is like, no, you owe me because you owe this to Bishop. Bishop was supposed to be just doing something for me. If he had just do it, done what he was supposed to be doing, he would be alive right now but you 
two, he was off looking into, uh, um, what's his face? Uh, Quinn. He was looking into Quinn for you, and that's what got him killed. And I obviously, like, that guilt already is there in Robin and him saying everything she's already feeling on. That's also the thing, like, you could feel a certain way, but when someone says exactly what you're feeling, what you're thinking to yourself, it cuts a little deeper when it comes from someone, because it's almost like that person's inside your head knows exactly what you're thinking and feeling, so it cut even deeper, because that's all that she's been thinking and probably feeling to herself. Because these are two people who are Bishop's protégés, and now it's like, right, it's like, he holds a grudge against you because of that, and it's like, right, this is my mentor, this is the person who taught me everything, this is someone that taught you everything, so it's like, his anger, her guilt, so, now she's gonna be wrapped up in a lot more CIA stuff, so I was like, oh, we're gonna see more Donald Logue? We most likely are because of this, and probably won't be, like, frequent throughout the season, it'll probably be sporadic, and I'm curious to see if Robin can find herself from underneath his thumb, uh, when the time comes, I'll ultimately have to wait and see, but. I'm also surprised, because I, I would have thought she would have gotten help from Mel and uh, Harry in this situation. Well, because I guess it's like, right, she knew that Harry and Mel were meeting up with her family, and she probably wanted to keep them calm by like, hey, by not contacting Harry and Mel, it makes Delilah and not, by not worry as much, so maybe that's why. Maybe it was a, an active choice. I mean, considering it's like, right, Harry and Mel could only do so much, too. It's like, I needed, like, all of Bishop's security firm to kind of back us up, because we couldn't necessarily get in contact with the CIA because we didn't know who to trust type of situation. So, um, so there's that, but it, it, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see how all that plays out going forward. Um, other than all of that, there's a whole situation with, uh, Dante who went to go see his father and his father's making a deal, which I thought was interesting. It's like, he, cause even Dante's like, yeah, you've had these deals thrown at you before. You've always tossed them out. He's like, yeah, well, all the people I've tried to like, I've kept quiet about and protected all these years. Some of them are gone. They're dead. Now others are locked up for shit. I can't help them with. So it's like, what's the point of my silence anymore? It's not worth it. So he's going to get out and probably in the next couple weeks and he wants to meet his grandchildren and it puts Dante in his very, complicated position because he he talks to his mom about it and his mom is like yes your dad's made his mistakes and this whole thing about second chances he talks to his, his ex about it and she's like and she's all about family and she's like yeah if but only if Dante's okay with it and he's not sure how to feel about it because as we've seen you know kind of those flashbacks especially from last season and just even the interaction he had with his dad in real life but even the interactions from the past when he was kind of you know uh, fighting for his life with those dirty cops that his dad wasn't the greatest person and it's like he does, he's not sure what to do in that regard he was even trying to text Robin for help but obviously she was off you know doing this but they do link up later on and so it is this interesting conversation where it's like what are you gonna do and for him it's like he believes in second chances, but he also doesn't know if his dad deserves one because it's like, right, letting the past go, but he's the one that gets to determine how the future is handled. And that's whether or not, you know, his father gets to be around his grandchildren. But Robin comes from the perspective of the only person that can know for sure if he's changed, you got to figure that out sooner rather than later. Because Robin comes from the perspective of, I lost my dad and my dad was my best friend. And I'd give anything for just one more day with him because you never know. My dad was here one day and then he was gone the next. You know, and that, that's life for you. You, 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 life forever will blindsign people. You know, so yeah, sometimes you know death is coming in some regards when someone's sick, but other times it's just like it comes out of nowhere and, uh, can knock you over, um, kind of like a bowling ball knocking over a pen, you know? And so, it is a situation of he kind of owes it to himself because you don't want to, like, wait to the last minute and then, like, have these regrets because you cut your father out of your children's life and you don't want to, you know, regret that later on. And she even says the line of, my dad was a great man. Not perfect because it's like, yeah, there are plenty. Because, yes, he made a lot of mistakes because he thought he, you know, he was doing what he believed was the right thing for his children. And even he's had the time to reflect upon it now that he's been locked up. I mean, even more so. Like, he had his very certain perspective on things the last time him and Dante talked in the confines of the show. But it's still the thing of he had even more time to sit on and recognize, like, right, I shouldn't have done that. I've made these mistakes, but I want to, I want to do better. I know I wasn't a good father to you, but I could be a better grandfather than my learn from my mistakes so um 
But even Robin's like, right, your dad must have done something good for you to turn out to be the man that you are today. So I was almost thinking like, go ahead, kiss, 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 but it's just a hug. I was almost hoping to invite him to dinner. Come on, invite him to dinner. But it's like, right, his kids are home, so he can't, you know, it's like he'd have to drop the kids off at his exes. Because I love that vibe. It's like, oh, what about that uh, that detective of yours? And the moment she said that, Robin rose her eyes like, oh, my God, like, Aunt Vi, stop. You, 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 now you're being messy. You know, so I, I was hoping she would have been able to invite him over for dinner, but uh, it does seem like he is making an attempt because uh, one of his youngest, he's saying like, oh yeah, this is my father, and the whole argument about like right responsibility, because he was teaching his children early on like, oh, what's the difference between a debit card and a credit card? Uh, stocks and bonds because it's like right responsibility doesn't take a day off so and I think it's kind of a, a principle that his dad kind of taught him as well I mean once again he followed in his father's footsteps and became a cop too so but it was also about being a better cop and being a different cop than his father once again he's always he did initially have to deal with like that cloud hanging above his head about who he was I mean obviously they even came up this season about his a couple, was was it last episode was it episode before last where it came up about who his dad was you know so either way so Dante's making that decision he is going to reach out to his father uh there's even the gym angle to it where he's going to that gym and that gym's kind of important to the community uh the guy who runs it played by uh Malik Yoba which I was like huh I mean, we must be seeing him from time to time because I'm like I don't know. It, it's a very specific role to give, like, to, like, I don't know. He's a like, recognizable enough actor, Malik Yoba, that I'm like, oh, if you give him that role, I get the feeling like that might be, like, a recurring role. But, I mean, maybe not. I'd assume so just because I'm making a point of the gym. And, obviously, Dante's got a lot of money from the compensation after everything he went through last season. So, he got a sizable compensation, got the new house, and had a whole bunch of money he didn't know what to do with. But his mom was like, yeah, like, the money came from a bad place, but there's a lot of good he can do with it. And this gym was kind of, this boxing gym was going to be, like, you know, the the mortgage, like, the, the, the payments were falling behind. And he used his money to pay for it in full because it's like, this is too important. It meant a lot to Dante. I mean, it's been around since... He was a kid, but also, like, it keeps a lot of kids off the street, keeps them from being involved in, like, you know, that gang life and getting swept up and gives them something else to look forward to, something to be a part of rather than that street life, you know, so... That's going to be definitely be interesting to see where things kind of go forward from there. I don't know if the owner, Malik Yoba's character, knows that it was Dante or whether he figures it was Dante. Because Dante probably didn't make a point of it. But he's probably going to figure out Dante did. Or maybe Dante's just going to keep that secret. It's like, ah, just let me be like a silent investor in what this represents for the community. So... So there's that angle to it. But it was also like the family getting together. You know, Robin, once again, having that conversation of, yeah, I try to keep, you know, for her, it's like, it is a little weird having Harry and Mel over, but it's still like a, yeah, this is part of the, uh, you know, she's spent so long trying to keep that part of her life and her personal life separate, but now they're kind of molded together. They always kind of bled over to small extents, but now they're fully connected. Even to the point Delilah goes to, um, uh, Mel to train her and but Mel's like no I don't want to do that I want to do that behind your mom's back you know so I'm gonna have to turn you down but you'll um Delilah's like well I'll, I'll find I'll, I'll, I'll I respect that choice but I am going to make this happen no matter even if I have to ask someone else to train me and it puts her in this complicated space because like Robin's like her best friend and colleague and it's like I don't want to betray that trust by going behind your back but she was in a situation where she wanted to train some young cadets who were not even that much older than Lila, but because it just wouldn't fit time frame wise, they got someone less experienced to train them, and it she will always regrets that. Which Harry's like, that wasn't on you. But she's like, if I don't train Delilah and something does happen, then it will be on me. Because right. Robin doesn't even want to think about the possibility that something could happen again. But once again, she never thought she'd get grabbed. Yes, there were extenuating circumstances. You were sold out by Griffin and stuff like that. Yes, sure. But it's still a thing of life is unpredictable. And she is going to be pissed at Mel for doing this behind her back. I was hoping Mel would be like, right, we're going to talk to your mom about this together. Because if maybe Mel could convince her. But it's like, no, Mel's like, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take you up on it. Um, kind of even love Harry being like, uh, cause Mel's like, what should I do? And Harry's like, I don't, in my, I don't envy your position. And she's just like, oh, come on. He's like, yeah, like, you know, I'm the, um, 
I'm the good listener. You're the one who makes the, you know, the sound decisions. I mean, he's like, yeah, you, you pick me, obviously, you know? So uh, she's the decision maker of the group. Because I even love later on being like, oh, which wine should we bring? And she picked one, which was a really good wine. And then later on, it's like, okay, Harry, which one should we start with? And Mel's like, we'll start with that one. He would want to start with that one. And it's like, oh, good choice. I love that. It, I got so giddy. It's like everyone's together. It's just like the whole family's together. Uh, and I thought that was so beautiful. And Harry being like, oh yeah, like Robin said, like, oh yeah, mom and Bob, she could cook a little bit. He's like, that's like saying Coltrane can um, play can p- play the sax. And he takes it, he's like, oh my god, this crust woman. He was just so into it. I love it. I got so giddy with them all being together. And then Robin showing up and, you know, Harry wanted to do a toast of the family you made, the family that's yours, and then also the family you choose. And it's like thankful for, to Robin for them all being here together like this. So, uh, But circling back to the male thing really quickly, she is going to take the blow, the brunt of it. Like, when it does come out, she's going to be like, yes, it was my decision so that Robin will be mad at her instead of Delilah because she doesn't want to use this to like she doesn't want this to be a a uh, gap between Delilah and uh, Robin but eventually uh, Delilah probably will tell Robin and it'll probably it probably won't initially help it'll make her feel like well how could you do that go behind my back I explicitly told you no it's probably going to be a combination of Delilah pushing back on her when it comes to that as well as Aunt Vi because you know Aunt Vi is probably going to feel the same way because I don't think she's told Robin that she's going to a gun range it's like we want that little that girl needs to feel safe you don't want her to grow up too fast and even Mel said it's episode once again it's too late she's already been through too much and even Aunt Vi is like I said I think she's keeping that to herself and the moment she tells Robin that I think for Robin that's going to change things it's like right I can't treat her as like that little girl anymore so she might start overseeing the training or in conjunction with Mel start overseeing the training but I think they're going to go through it the moment she finds out because like Mel knows like oh she's going to be pissed like Robin's going to be extra pissed probably going to be like so avoiding Mel and maybe it's going to be Harry and Vi that can really kind of I don't know if they're going to have like a fallout fallout, whether it'll be a multiple episode thing or whether it'll just be a one episode thing. I, I, I just, Robin's not going to like that because it's like, right, regardless of you being like family, I am her mother. Plus you also had to consider too how her ex is miles is going to feel about that. So that's going to be interesting too, because we still haven't circled back to him wanting full custody too. Cause that was kind of an element introduced. So We'll have to wait and see how that ultimately ends up playing out. So I think a lot of that's probably going to hit around the same time. Because if he finds out about her training, he's going to assume... He probably will assume Robin's the one that did it. And then Robin's like, wait, I'm not training you. And then find out Mel. That might be how that blowout kind of eventually happens. Because that could also be ammunition Mel ends up using against her. So there's a whole, that could end up being even more reason why her and Mel could end up having a fallout. I'm thinking well in advance, who knows, where all this will ultimately end up taking up uh, taking us but uh some very very interesting developments to keep in mind as we go forward in the show i'm interested to see where the next episode takes us with all of this but really that's all i'm going to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good bye